Hello everyone. So in this video, we are going to have quick recap of whatever we have discussed till now. We have covered a lot of different hooks. So we'll just go for a quick recap and we will go to the background history also. So in the React, we were having we are having these stateful components where you can write ESX classes, you can add lifecycle methods, their component will have some kind of a state which you will be updating with some kind of a DOM events, right? This is what we have typical ES6 class. We have all these lifecycle methods, component did mount, component will unmount, derive state from props, all these different new set of lifecycle methods has been introduced and we are using them to do a lot of different things. But what about the functional component, right? That we understood now that functional component are also same powerful as we have in the ES6 class based component because now we are adding the hooks there, right? So this was the earlier picture where when we were calling these functional component as a stateless component, they were just rendering some data from the props. But now this is not true. Hooks are actually adding the lifecycle methods to the functional component. And now functional component can also have state. Okay. This thing has changed. Okay. So hooks, what it is and what we are doing with the hooks. So hooks are like simplified code logic. These are just a fixed set of functions which we are using and they are actually adding some kind of a life cycle mechanism for these components where we don't have these component will mount, did mount, derive state from props. All these methods are not there in the functional component. So here we are using these. Okay. So what is a so now uh, the functional component also having these kind of state. If you just look at the example. So this is a class based component, right? And here in this class based component, we have a state and we are writing some DOM events to update the state. Here we have state and we have written these methods with the arrow functions to update the state. Okay, so same code base if we just try to write with the hooks, I think we are going to write less number of code. We don't need to worry about binding these functions with this object. So we are currently we are using arrow functions, so we don't need to deal with the this binding. But here the same code we have written in the five lines, right? Directly all the methods can be bound to the DOM events. Set count can be triggered directly here, right? So this is the major difference between ES6 class based component and the functional component. They are same powerful as the class based component are. They are having the lifecycle methods, but using the hooks. Okay, so I mean, we can just see this in the sandbox, how it is working. Simple example, increment, decrement. This is use state hook. So when you are actually clicking onto these buttons, we are updating these state increment decrement right so what we are doing is increment we are updating the state using set count and count is actually representing the current state okay so coming back to the next we'll, we are going to talk about use effect hook so use effect hook runs after the component is rendered so it is like the replacement of component did mount and component did update and it also deals with component will unmount. So this is the ideal place to handle the side effects like you are making an API call, uh, getting the data from somewhere. All these things are being handled from this. Okay, so these all these methods are being replaced with simple method use effect in the functional component. So this is the difference we have. Now, if we just look at the other examples we are going to have is uh, simple this is a function here we are using use effect hook so what you are doing is you are just updating the title for this document in this particular example so use effect hook is getting triggered so it will uh, trigger initially and it will keep triggering whenever some changes are happening in the uh, state of a component okay but this is fine we are not doing anything it's just uh, setting the title of a document but if you are going to do something else, you are updating a state here, then it will you will go into the loop because it will again render, it will call the use effect, use effect will again update the state. Okay. So use effect in every render use effect will be executed, including the first one. Okay, so it is executing the first time, and after that, whenever the state is getting updated, it is getting triggered. 
and you state this use effect hook we are actually defining this inside the class so it has access to all state all props everything we can use this use uh, effect hook as a watcher to watch a particular state if state state is getting changed then do this so you can pass the dependencies in the use effect hook and that will take care of this okay this is what we do with the class based component you will be writing component did mount here we have replaced with use effect hook okay use effect hook has this return also so sometimes what you wanted to do is you want to run something once component is getting unmounted like you are setting title something then once the component is unmounted you wanted to change the title to the home page that you can do here so this return this cleanup method will trigger whenever your component is getting unmount it is same as component will unmount for the life cycle methods okay so it is ret return the original title when well when the component is getting unmount so i think this is clear now here we are doing this in the class based component we are writing two different life cycle methods component did mount component will unmount this can be replaced with simple use effect logic and what it is doing is it is setting the title and whenever the component is getting unmounted then this code is getting executed and it is setting the title to the original value okay so this is the logic we are writing we got the initial title this from the use state and here we are updating it and whenever the component is getting unmount we are setting up the document dot title something else okay so this is like the advantage of using the the use effect hook we are actually doing lot of things here now should component update here we are returning false these three things are doing the same thing which this function is doing should component update means whenever there is a change is happening in the component do not re-render do not execute this use effect because we are not passing any dependency this is empty so whatever happens this is going to execute only once first time right because we are not passing any dependency so it is not checking on any particular uh, variables to do the change okay these are very basic examples i think i can skip this here we are passing dependency means whenever the, this particular title is getting changed this use effect will trigger and it will just set the title to the new title which you are getting from either some event or somewhere this title is in this huge state so you, you might be doing set title to update this title and whenever that is happening use effect is getting triggered okay so i mean these are the very basic and this is a simple demo we can just see how it is working so on the load it is actually just setting the title and whenever you unmount the component then it will just move away like if you are changing the component here we don't have we have just only single component here okay so now we'll talk about use context okay so use context is actually used to fix this props drilling problem when you wanted to send the data to your uh, react component tree any component tree can access the data if you are setting that in the context that we have seen enough examples i will just directly go to one of the code example so use reducer we have already seen how we are actually binding the data in the user reducer and then we are setting that data in the context okay user reducers uh, you might have heard about redux so there is a concept of reducer function so it is driven from there only it accepts like uh, if you just talk about the example only something like this user reducer takes a reducer functions and the initial state and using this dispatch function dispatch function will trigger the action on to this reducer function and we will be just calling increment decrement this example we have already discussed so it's a pretty much straightforward this is how we use use reducer function okay you can create the initial state dynamically using lazy lazy initialization so this is how we can do it so in it it's like initial state is this initial state we are getting uh, initial count and this in it init method is going to return the initial state so this is a lazy initialization of a state for the use reducer okay similarly we can write custom hooks and we will see this how we can write custom hook in the coming set of videos so now these hooks are nothing but simple functions right 
how we can use the existing hooks to build a custom hook like axios hook you can write you can write a fetch hook you can write a local storage hook you can write a lot of hooks which will just do the same things some part of things which we are writing in daily code right axios we are using so we can write a hook which will take care of the error handling response handling we can use the fetch hook which will take care of the getting the data using the fetch api uh, similarly local storage hook that can take care of the getting setting the data updating the data in the local storage that we will see those examples in the coming set of videos okay so in next video we are going to talk about use reference hook that will be actually help help us to access the dom